We are now just days away from a strong hurricane, if not a major hurricane, making landfall in the United States. Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you posted along the way. Please follow my updates here as we continue to track what is going to be Idalia. Subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. My commitment to you is to keep you safe when it comes to severe weather. And in this case, we're tracking what's likely to become a major hurricane. We are now in the wheelhouse of our high resolution models. And in fact, that's what a lot of our high resolution models are showing. And they did a great job with tracking Ian last year, which is why I have to take them seriously, okay? Let's look at what this system is doing right now. This morning, it's been showing signs of getting stronger, and we need to watch that closely. This is our visible satellite. I'm going to pause it right here and get in on some of this action. Folks, this is technology we didn't have three, four, five years ago. It can save lives. It is just phenomenal what we can do with the technology nowadays. Look at the storms blowing up right here. Significant storms, a significant squall right there. This all helps to feed this system. And the problem with this system right now, it's moving the wrong way. It's moving southeast at five miles per hour. It was moving north yesterday at 10 miles per hour. And then it was moving north at three miles per hour. And then it became stationary. Now it's moving southeast. You might have remembered a couple of my updates ago, I told you every hour that this system is in the Caribbean and the Gulf is too long. I don't want to see it in there at all. It, this is bathwater, folks. This is high octane fuel just sitting there for this system to feed off of. And unfortunately, that's a, what I'm afraid we're going to see later today as this thing begin to get organized and stronger faster. There's that center of circulation just east of the Yucatan Peninsula. Flooding rains possible for western Cuba later today as this system finally begins to move toward the north. But right now, as you can see, its direction southeast at five miles per hour, and it's got winds at 35 miles per hour. A new track from the National Hurricane Center comes out at 11 o'clock. Right now, they're showing strong cat one with the caveat that this could be stronger than that. Uh, and they're kind of going to steadily escalate. They don't want to blow this thing up and then have to retreat back down. They're going to steadily increase this. I would not be surprised to see a Cat 2 icon on here in one of our later updates today, especially with the model data coming in that I'm seeing. So the spaghetti models, uh, they are coming into great agreement here. I like to see a, 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 a good agreement here, but anywhere from Cedar Key, Florida, to Panama City Beach, you need to be concerned with this storm. You need to be making preparations right now. Preparations to not only get your hurricane kit ready, but preparations to maybe even leave where you're at if you're along the direct coastline because we are days away from what could be a major hurricane making landfall. I'm seeing Cat 2, maybe even Cat 3 in some of these models. I hope that the models back off on that a little bit today, but right now we need to prepare for the fact that that could happen. Also getting great agreement in our three global models. You hear us talk about the European and the American a lot, but the Canadian does a great job, and all three of them are pretty much in exact agreement with Panama City Beach to Cedar Key, really right in there in the middle near the Big Bend region. Watching that closely because the track inland is, of course, very important for the Western Carolinas. We want to see it go east of the mountains, not over the mountains, because the Appalachian Mountains can stall those storms out and really cause some problems. A tropical depression number 10, the GF model right now showing we've got to watch it closely. And when you look at the operational versus the many other different model runs of this, we've got 30 or so different runs of it. And when you see some consistency or some model agreement in that to where uh, they're all pretty consistent, you can kind of trust the forecast. Let me show you under the hood of the European model. The yellow is what you see. It's the one operational model run of it. But you also have 51 different varieties of it. My two-year-old is right behind me. She's playing, so you might hear her a little bit. Uh, 51 different model variations of this, and here it is. It shows it moving north and eastbound. So there's some great model agreement here with this thing moving north. What does it look like on radar? Well, it's a sloppy system at first. Then it gets tighter and stronger as it makes landfall just east of Panama City Beach on the European. The GFS, stronger, but a similar output here. It shows Mexico City Beach, Panama City Beach, 
maybe just east of there, with winds over 100 miles per hour on this latest American model run. And as you look at the high resolution model, I only have access to this to a certain point. WYFF4, we have access to the model, which is great. It's a great in-house model that we run and it did a great job with Ian last year. This is exclusive, and I'm telling you right now, this thing wants to blow up. This is our high resolution model, gets us to Tuesday at 3 p.m. You're likely dealing with a Cat 2 at this point. And here we are, Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., moving toward uh, the Big Bend region, and here we are, here's where it stops, 2 a.m. on Wednesday. Every six hours, I get another one of these, so we'll be able to go out to 8 a.m. on Wednesday on the next update, but uh, you get the trajectory here. It's trying to show what could be a major hurricane making landfall in Florida right there. And of course, if it's stronger making landfall, it's going to be stronger inland as well. What do the wind speeds look like on this? Well, boy, they're strong. This high resolution model really wants to get going. Those whites are 100 plus mile per hour winds, and that high res model wants to send it right into Florida right there. So Tampa to Panama City Beach cannot stress it enough. You need to be dialed in on this and check back every couple hours for updates. Four plus inches of rain. The good news with this system is it does get moving. So inland flooding, always a concern and there will be flooding. Folks, please, my plea for you would be to just not take chances. Don't drive through standing water. If you're near uh, creeks, streams, rivers, move away from them. Go stay with a friend or a family member till this storm passes. Inland flooding is always the most deadly component to tropical systems. Why am I so concerned about this storm and why is today crucial? Well, the storm sits right here, folks, and it's going to make a path like this. It's going southeast and then it starts to get pulled north and it does something like that. So the track of this would traverse it over some of the worst of conditions for a hurricane. I mean, it's, it's, it's just going right over high octane fuel and could really be a dangerous storm in the coming days. So is there anything after it? Well, no, not really. Right now, it looks like we get a little bit of a reprieve from this storm beyond, say, Labor Day weekend. So Labor Day weekend beyond, we're looking okay. So folks, again, my commitment to you is to keep you safe. If you don't already, I would urge you to please subscribe to my channel. Uh, my commitment to you is uh, that I'm passionate about helping people when it comes to severe weather. And in this case, this could be a very powerful hurricane. I want you to prepare for it and stay tuned for later updates on throughout the day.